Today's episode is brought to you by Skillshare. 2C, take one, marker. 2F, take one, marker. 2G, take two, marker. 18A, take one, marker. And action, Joey. <laughs> Look who I have. She, she's helping me out today. Look, she's so cute. My little kitty. Ooh. Awkward. <laughs> One day a while back during the great Cinestill drought of 2019, I was looking for some 800T on Cinestill's website, which at this point didn't exist. I stumbled upon a black and white film. As you know, Cinestill is a company that repackages Kodak motion picture line of films and makes them consumable for our still cameras. This motion picture film stock has definitely exposed some pretty great films. Psycho, Schindler's List, Memento, Raging Bull, and the biggest masterpiece of them all, Clerks. We are talking about none other than Eastman Kodak's Double X, or as some people call it, BWXX. Never having shot this film before, I knew I needed to put this into my cart and cement myself in history. So today I wanted to give you a look at all the different formats of this black and white film in 35, 120, 16, and Super 8. Double X was introduced in 1959, making it a sexy 62 year old. And currently it's the only black and white negative film in Kodak's motion picture lineup. They have Tri-X, but that's a reversal film. If you look at the front of Kodak's film can, you'll notice that they suggest two different ISOs under different lighting conditions. 250 under daylight and 200 under tungsten light. Now you'll also notice that Double X goes by a series of numbers as well, kind of like most of Kodak's motion picture lineup. Otherwise known as 5222 for their 35 millimeter and 7222 for their 16 millimeter films. And just to further clarify, the oh so delicious Cinestill 800T is actually recut from Vision 3's 500T, also known as 5219 or 7219. And technically Kodak doesn't make double X for Super 8, but Pro 8 here in Burbank, California cuts down a master roll of double X and spools it onto eight millimeter film. So it's really the only place that you can get it for Super 8. This is the hardest loading ever. <laughs> oh my God. One of the major reasons that I went down this double X rabbit hole is because I was gonna shoot my next short film on black and white. And naturally double X was the only choice. My film cassette tape was actually gonna have two time periods, present day being shot in black and white and past being shot in the color. But first thing I had to do was test how this black and white stock would react in my first location. So that's why I decided to shoot Cinestill's BWXX because it was literally the stock I was gonna shoot my short film on. So my good friend and DP Tristan Noli did a little tech scout at my friend's apartment. Since we knew the light would be coming from these giant windows in the apartment, we rated the film at 250. We wanted to see how the film would do retaining the highlights and the shadow detail. Since we'd be looking out there giant windows. One thing you'll notice with this film when looking at these test images is how noisy the film is in the midtones, but incredibly sharp as well. All these test images was taken with Tristan's Nikon F5 with a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. Once seeing these test stills, I knew this short film would look amazing on 16 millimeter. Now, this brings me into shooting 7222 or double X for 16 millimeter. And just as I thought, this film performed beautifully. For my short film, I shot on my Aton XTR with my good buddies over at Zeiss lending me some CP2 and CP3 cinema lenses. Those lenses aren't traditionally made for the S16 format. They're actually lenses for 35 millimeter film cameras, but I wanted the sharpest glass possible. And those lenses rendered the image beautifully. Mm -hmm. 
As expected, the 60 millimeter grain structure is definitely noisier than the 35. And just like the 35 millimeter tests we did, the 16 was exceptionally noisy in the midtones and the highlights. Personally, I love this look, and I think it really adds to the character of the film. The thing about BWXX, or 7222, is that it has a lot of latitude in its film negative. Looking at the highlights in this image, you can make out a ton of detail outside the windows. The image isn't blown out at all. Now, moving our way to 2021, Cinestill decided to be our drug dealer once again, giving us some sweet, sweet gray tones. Now getting a master roll of double X, they're cutting it down to 120 size. Cinestill being the only supplier on the block. That's a hell of a drug right there. Naturally, I had to pick myself up some black and white BWXX for 120. And the homies at Beers and Camera in conjunction with the dark room were throwing a little get together in downtown LA. So what's a better time to shoot black and white than downtown with my friends? There's not, so I did. I mean, you don't have to take this photo. I just thought it would be kind of a cool photo. You think it'll be great, so... <laughs> Doesn't Juan look sexy? Here's where BWXX and 120 is different. Unlike 16 and 35, the film is virtually grainless, which is to be expected given the larger format. When it comes to this stuff in 120, I'm a fan. But I don't think it has anything over Tri-X or T-Max. They're all great films. BWXX is sharp and it has good range. It looks fantastic. You really can't go wrong. What is she doing? What are you doing? But I do think that double X has better character once you go down in frame size, like a 16 or 35. Oh yeah, speaking of going down in size, the furthest you can go, Super 8. But before I tell you about that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community that can offer you oodles and oodles of different classes. Classes that help teach you a new skill or two. And with new classes being launched every week, they have tons to choose from. Recently, I found this class called Designing a Series of Movie Posters in a Collage Technique by Sophia and Senya. I love creating movie posters for my films, and this helped me think outside of the box. And the great thing is that there are no ads, and the entire catalog is now available in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German subtitles. For the first thousand people who use the link in the description below, will receive a one month trial to Skillshare's premium membership. So what are you waiting for? Let's go learn some stuff together. So recently, Jason and I went on a super secret film trip, but don't worry, I'll tell you about that later.
Super 8 is a vibe. It's not like you should be expecting the highest fidelity available. And to be expected, the Super 8 format is kind of soft, even at its sharpest. But look at that highlight retention. It still performs just like all the others in the BWXX lineup. So to wrap up this crazy list of different formats, I have to say, Double X is dope. From Super 8 or Super 16 to moving your way up state to 35 or the delicious 120, this film performs flawlessly. For each of these formats, I barely had to color correct the image. Just adding a bit of contrast made the images shine. I mean, come on, this film is made for pros, so of course it's gonna perform like Prince did in the 2007 Super Bowl halftime show. And yeah, I did reuse that joke, deal with it. The good thing about Double X is that it doesn't actually have a Remjet layer on the backing. So you don't have to remove it before you develop. And really you could buy a can of Double X for 35 and re-spool it yourself. And the best thing is you could just use normal chemicals to develop. Okay, that will do it for today's episode. Let me know what you think of Double X and if you shot it before. And if you're interested in seeing cassette tape, I'll make a link down below. Okay, I'll talk to you later.